All right, guys, looks like we got a... Uh, they look like Troodons in there. Trudon, Troodon. I've only ever read the name, I've never actually heard it. So... Unless, oh no! I, I think I'm mistaken. But anyway, we got some juvenile dinosaurs in here, so they're not babies, they're not tiny like the alligators. Uh, they're a little bigger, which... I guess if you can go either way, you know, go a little bigger, go a little more theatrical. Oh, there's a... Noah or one of his sons up there. Now we have the dinosaurs. We got a set of more Ethereum. Let's see. Oh, you can walk around uh, behind, which I guess is convenient. I don't think I'm supposed to be behind. Oh. Okay, now I'm a little scared of the heights. So, finally, dinosaurs. Uh, looks like we got some animal care here. Mm. Ceratops scenes. Oh, no, I'm wrong. I think this is an extinct group of mammals. I. Guys, it's huge in here. And I'm kind of wondering, um, and I want to ask, you know, how much, uh, like, are the number of cages here in the mu in the art encounter representative of the number of cages that have been on board Noah's Ark? What's this over here? Oh, yes. This is the. So I've actually always wondered this myself, like how much do, um, how much would we consider um, different apes to be a part of the same kind, or part of different kinds? Um, so here we have a Lucy type animal. took evolutionary biology, they taught us that uh, chimpanzees were genetically closer to humans than, uh, than gorillas are, but I really wonder, uh, looking back, how much of that was cherry-picking the data, because apparently that's an issue with nested hierarchies, is um, we'll look at some genes and then others that don't fit the pattern um, get kind of ignored. Um, that's something I want to do a little more research on before I talk about it more. Um, I try not to speculate too much in my videos, but yeah, I'm here and uh, there's only so much time I have to go online and read all the analyses before you know doing a video. Sorry. <laughs> I think people are looking on their phones more than at the exhibit around them. So I'm probably going to walk through a second time um, today. I know there's other things to see here, but um, I'll 
I'll probably walk through a second time, like just totally off camera. You know, because this is amazing and I really love it. And I'm here primarily for me more than anything. Um, but definitely feel free to donate to my Patreon if you like, uh, like these sorts of videos. Oh, Animal Care and Animal Maintenance. See, I've thought about that as a sequel video to my Noah videos um, after I'm done with the one that I'm working on now. Uh, so you got kind of the bird seed things here. Far away, I would thought that was like Rice Krispies, but. <laughs> I think my new friend here wants Rice Krispies. <laughs> Want to say hi to my fans? Awesome. There you go. So you guys got to come here. You'll meet lots of nice people. So I hope my 10,000 YouTube subscribers uh, send us some Rice Krispie treats. Ooh, I gotta see this. So my engineering friends who went to uh, college with me, um, well, maybe you can explain this to me a little better than I can. Oh, there's a, lo and behold, at the museum, there is a chart explaining the exhibit for me. Okay. So it looks like in a nutshell, um, like you guys who have dogs and cats at home, maybe you've had the automatic animal feeders where the animal eats some kibble or drinks some water and it automatically um, will just eat more kibble or water, uh, you know, just, and it's not even an electronic thing, it's just a, like, hey, the kibble came out and more comes out, or they drink the water and you know, the water pressure and air pressure just refills the bowl. So, this is a very interesting, it's like you don't have to like feed every animal every meal. Um, and how much uh, these animals were uh, hibernating, um, how much were they going into a partial state of hibernation, um, it's also a lot of very interesting questions.